This is Fantoff Stave Church. There's some wonderful ironware on some of the doors. I think that looks like a good future project. We may have to make our own version of some of this stuff. My starting material is a piece of one inch square, seven inches long. So that's 25 millimeters by 180 millimeters long. I'm gonna cut down two and a quarter from one end, four and three quarters from the other end, and not cross in the middle. Those cuts are just gonna meet, and they are made 90 degrees off of each other so that they open in different directions. Should make sense when we see it open up. Originally, I would imagine a cross may have been forge welded or maybe done with a lap or half lap joint riveted together. The one that was on there really looked to me like it was probably cut out of plate. And instead of doing that, I thought I would take a, an approach that's a little bit more traditional, but doesn't require the forge welding, something that most people could do at home if they have the time and the patience to cut the big bar. And that's a very traditional approach to the popular blacksmith's cross or Friedrich's cross that usually has the two cuts cross in the middle, so it opens up a diamond inside the cross. Very dramatic, but for this project, I don't want it to open up in the middle. So I just brought those cuts together and when I open it, there'll be a dimple in the middle that I can drill through or punch through, or perhaps there'll be a very small hole, but it'll just be big enough to put the center mount for the ring handle on there, and that's kind of what I'm going for. The Fantoft Stave Church was originally built around 1150 and was moved to Bergen, Norway in 1883. I don't know if the ironware at that time was all of the original ironware or if there were reproductions, but in 1992 the church was destroyed by arson, so what's there today is a reconstruction, and my impression is that most of the ironware is a modern interpretation. As such, what I'm doing today is not at all historically accurate but is again my impression based on the ironwork that was on there when we visited it a few months ago.
Overall, this ended up being about 11 and a half inches. It's about 280 millimeters long. Seven inches across the arms, that's about 180 millimeters. With the cross all forged, I need to clean it up a little bit. I'll take this to the grinder and do as much as I can on the grinder. Then I'll use a file to get in here to these corners and make sure there's no cold shuts right there. I don't think a cold shut's really gonna hurt this unless you abuse it some, but once it's hanging on a door, there's nothing that's gonna flex this and make a cold shut propagate into a crack. But if we can get rid of them, that's a better plan. Black Bear Forge is sponsored by Combat Abrasives. Use the link in the video description and the coupon code BLACKBEAR10 for discount on your order. It's a lot harder to fuller a straight line than I thought it was going to be, and holding the fuller in my left hand while I use the hammer in my right hand makes it even harder since I'm right-handed. So I think going under the treadle hammer is going to be the best option for this. That way I can hold the fuller in my right hand, the work in my left hand, and I have a little bit more maneuverability that way. It also looks like starting at the outer edge and working my way in instead of trying to start in the middle and work my way out. It's a little bit easier to get accurate. In any case, this is the kind of thing that needs a lot of practice if you're gonna do a lot of these things. Some sort of an index mark that you can do cold would be really be nice. You can lay it out, draw the line on, run a tool down there cold. But I'm just not sure I can get a deep enough groove that way, so I'm not sure if that's the best bet. And I think just more practice is the way to go. But since this whole thing is a test piece and learning exercise, I'm learning something, and I hope you are too. Let's go on to the ring for the handle. For the handle, I'm gonna start with 11 inches of three quarter inch square bar. I'm gonna taper it to about five eighths of an inch on each end from the center, and then we're gonna twist it. That's gonna pose a little bit of difficulty trying to twist a tapered bar evenly, especially since it's tapered on both ends and not just on one end. But we'll see how that goes. It's another learning exercise. I have a center punch mark in the center of the bar, so I know where to start the taper.
When making twists, it twists a little bit faster wherever it's hottest. So for a tapered bar like this, trying to keep it hot in the thicker sections, at least initially, so that that twists a little faster, then selectively heat either with a torch or going back to the forge to get it hot wherever it is that it needs to twist and just keep an eye on it, go back and forth and maybe a little here, a little there. And sooner or later, we get a twist that's pretty even. Our next challenge though is going to be making this a round ring. If it was just a square bar, I'd do it at the anvil and maybe over the cone mandrel and it would be pretty simple to make a round ring out of this. With a twist, if you're working over the anvil or hitting it with a steel hammer, you're going to mess up your twist pattern. It's going to flatten all those nice crisp edges and it's not going to look as good. So with that in mind, I'm going to try and do this with bending forks as much as possible and hopefully just put the forks right at the ends. I don't know if I can get this hot enough to make it bend evenly. In the long run, I'm probably going to have to go over the mandrel or the horn of the anvil, something like that, use a rawhide mallet on one side and just try to be as gentle as I can. But we'll see. Nice big wooden cone mandrel would be nice, but this would burn it up in a hurry. Actually, before we do that, I want to round up the ends so that they'll pivot nicely on the finished piece. Now my original plan with this project was to try and get it completely done in one video, but there are some little details that I'd like to see if I can figure out how to do. Some little round elements that were in the corners of the one on the actual stave church that I think I know how it was done, but I haven't tried it yet, so I need to work on that and figure that out. And then I think this handle came out a little bit too massive. I don't mind the diameter, but I think it's just too heavy a piece of material for the size that this cross ended up. So I'm going to make another handle. This one was three quarter inch square bar. I'm going to start with five eighths square bar, do that. And then next week we'll join this project again and try and get this all wrapped up. Plus I have the Rocky Mountain Smiths coming by this weekend for a live demo. So that would have been yesterday if you're watching this on YouTube Sunday morning. And that will give me some more time to practice some of these techniques, maybe refine something, bounce some ideas off those folks. And then when we pick this up again next week, I hope to have a little bit better idea where I'm going with it. In the meantime, stay safe, wear your safety glasses. We'll see you for the next video.